Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the workbench. Dan here, again, as always. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about modeling grain spillage. And the reason I'm bringing this topic up, obviously we just finished the AEQI covered hopper that I had in the previous video. Uh, I hope you guys liked that build. That was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with that. I'm actually thinking about doing another one of those, but um, the point is I've been working on a bunch of these covered hoppers. Uh, I've been trying to make a small grain train. I'll actually show you guys some of the cars I've been working on uh, so you can kind of get the general theme of why I'm kind of pursuing this right now. Uh, but grain spillage, obviously this is something I covered before. Uh, I did a very crude video a long time ago doing some Atherin Blue Box uh, covered hoppers with some baking soda. Uh, I, I can't even watch that video at this point. Like, it was good for its time and that's how you learn, you know, you gotta try staying, you gotta try some things out and learn, but I wanna try to really perfect this and I'm gonna demonstrate to you guys some of the methods that I've learned recently in perfecting grain spillage. Now we've got to keep in mind here, before we pursue modeling the grain spillage, what kind of grain spillage are we modeling? Uh, there's the kind of grain spillage where it's rotten grain at the top of a car, for example. Uh, you'll have soybean spillage, corn spillage in varying degrees, sometimes uh, processed soybeans. That'll be that really, gri uh, really grimy white powdery substance that's running down the sides of these grain hoppers. Uh, sometimes the corn, that will moreover build up on the top of some of these cars and you'll get patches of mold in these black uh, grungy looking areas on the tops of the cars. That in particular is what we're going to be trying to model in this video because the particular grain hoppers that I'm modeling are corn haulers and I'm going to be trying to portray that. So I'll go ahead and show you guys uh, some of the cars and the car that we are going to be working on and how we're going to achieve the effects that we want. As you can see I have a number of these cars that I'm working on. Most of them are pretty much completed in terms of weathering. They're just waiting to get varying degrees of load spillage. Uh, but the car we're looking at in particular is the AEX15499. This is a real rust bucket here. This car took me about a week to weather. Um, it's all done now. It's all sealed up and we're ready to do the load spillage. I basically want to model the corn spillage that accumulates around the tops of these hatches. Uh, and it usually, it gets pretty bad sometimes, there's usually a lot of spillage. They don't really clean it up on these cars, it usually just gets left up here and rots. And you get these big black stains and things like that. So, well, that's basically what I want to try to model here. Uh, but this is the car we're going to be working with. Uh, let's go ahead and go to modeling the grain. So for me, when I'm trying to model a load spillage like this, I obviously want to try to keep it as authentic and realistic looking as possible, trying to replicate the kind of load that's on these cars, in this case the corn kernels uh, from grain elevators. And it's been a real interesting challenge trying to replicate this. I've experimented a little bit with a couple different variations of materials, uh, but I really need to find something finer. My first try here was using polenta, which is basically a very fine processed cornmeal. Um, obviously, for one thing, it's actually corn based just like the real thing so that's why I first went to this because I have tons of this I work with this at uh, work all the time um, I tried this but it's just way too coarse it just doesn't look right uh, I tried it on a car here and in this, in this particular case it was just kind of a failure you can see it from a distance looks fine when you get up close it looks like there's like shredded yellow foam from a mattress all over the top of the car uh, so it just didn't work so we need to find something smaller and finer to do this so we're actually going to be going to my spice cupboard uh, to try to find something so let's uh, let's go over there so I obviously have a ton of spices um, as you can see here no we're not going to be doing cooking but what I noticed at the top here was the ground ginger if we actually take a look at this if we open up the container you can see how fine this material is. It's very, very fine. This is extremely fine milled product here. But as you can see, it has the appearance of older grain that's been sitting on the top of the car for a while. This is exactly what I want. So, this is what I'm going to be using. Alright, so now we found our material that I wish to use. And by the way, anything that's about this color and is about this consistency and fine powder Okay, so we got the car set up that we're going to be working on on our workbench here. I've put a napkin underneath the car to catch any kind of spillage that we get because obviously I don't want to get all this powder and everything all over my uh, desk here and then have to clean that up. So I put the napkin under there just to kind of catch anything that might come off the top of the car. Now I'm using the ginger powder, as I said, but anything will work as long as it's this bright yellowish uh, color and as long as it's very fine. You've got to make sure that this is very fine, okay? Uh, that's very important. So we're going to get started here. First thing to note on these cars, again, as I talked uh, about uh, earlier in the video, 
when you do the corn spillage, most of the time with older grain, when it sits up on the tops of these cars, uh, you'll usually get a lot of mold and black stains that'll start kind of running down the sides of the car. Uh, sometimes it's pretty bad. I've even seen some of it where it'll start to sprout. And a way you can actually model the sprouting is to get some um, fine static grass tufts and actually glue them in place on the roof walk. I've done that to a couple cars so far and it's actually pretty cool. But what we're going to do first is model some of these stains and I'm going to be using some soot black aim powder. Okay, And I just basically take this I'm going to be using a liner brush for certain areas and then a Smash down Citadel brush. You can see it's pretty worn out. I'm using this specifically for the powders, and this is what I'm going to be using to apply this. I just take a little bit of this powder, like this. I load it into a cap, and then I just uh, basically take it, load it into the bristles like this, and then I start to transfer this to the model like this. You can see it spreads very well, and you can build this up in varying layers. Some spots are going to be a little bit heavier. But think of how the grain is going to spread out on the tops of these cars. It'll usually, uh, they'll usually be that heavier accumulated area, and then it'll kind of wash out as rain kind of takes it. It'll travel down the sides, so it'll kind of spread out a little bit. So as you're doing this, spread that out just a little bit, kind of like what I did there, where you can see it kind of fans out. And that's the great thing about these powders is that you can really achieve these great little effects. But just again, keep it very random here. I'm not trying to model a specific prototype from photo. It's actually kind of hard to find photos from the tops of these cars, but I've seen them enough times uh, going under overpasses and everything like that where you can see some of the spillage. And it is just like this, basically. So I'm just going to be applying the powder in random little areas like this until I'm satisfied. And I'm going to repeat this on both sides. Okay, so to glue the material down, I'm going to be using Elmer's Glue All. I prefer this over regular white glue to secure all this because it's a little bit more durable, I find, than straight white glue. Uh, so I'm going to be using this. So I just like to take a little bit out of the bottle. I'll just get a little bit if I can. You won't need that much. You just grab a little bit with your brush like this, and then I'll just transfer it to my paper. And then. I'll take my brush and I'll mix it with just a little bit of water to just dilute it just a little bit. I'm not too diluted though, I just want it to make it a little bit easier to move around on the fine details of this roof. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit like that, we'll move back over to our car and zooming in on where we've started putting the spillage, I'm just going to start concentrating the glue right up underneath that hatch like this. If you need to, you can use a finer brush. That's your call there, but I'm using this liner brush. I got pretty good hand control here with this, so I can just brush it in where I need it. And I'm going to be applying the glue very randomly like this, just in certain little areas. With the glue applied, I'm going to go ahead and take a very small pinch of this ginger powder, and I'm going to very carefully sprinkle it underneath the roof walks and hatches like this kind of in between that area rather there you go so you're gonna have a lot of it like that and that's fine what we're gonna need to do now is kinda spread it around a little bit I'm just gonna kinda shake it and then I'm just gonna kinda do that a little bit and I'm just gonna kind of blow it off if we get some extra on the roof walk I'm just going to take a clean brush and we can kind of scrape some of that extra off. We just want to keep it concentrated underneath those hatches like this. Uh, sometimes it'll get on the roof walk, but very often it'll kind of blow off. It's just going to moreover be concentrated underneath these roof walks like this. So I'm going to go ahead and take this to the trash can now and I'm going to blow some more of this material off and we'll show you guys uh, what this looks like. Alright, so after I've removed the excess, this is what we have left over. It's very similar to the application of the baking soda technique, uh, though it's a little bit more refined, a little bit more perfected here. It doesn't look all clumpy. It's very realistic to the way the grain spillage is on a lot of these cars. I've achieved it on the opposite side as well. You can see it looks really nice. We've got these really nice patches of grain. Some of it's even extending onto the roof walk there, and again you can see how fine that is. It's very fine. That looks really good. Okay, so some last tips 
on doing this. Um, after I've let this dry for a couple hours, um, I will go ahead and spray the top portion of this car again with a little bit of dull coat just to seal everything up, get everything flattened back out, uh, hide any little puddles of glue left over, any of that shine that's left over by the white glue will hide. Um, and then of course we'll be sealing up the rest of this load too, make it nice and tight and compact so it uh, stays in place. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Like I said, it's a very easy technique to do, very quick and easy. Uh, but it's a great little effect to add more realism to your grain hoppers. Alright guys, so there you have it. Just another quick tip trick video I wanted to put out there for you guys. Uh, in relation to the last video, I, I talked about this uh, method I did briefly on the grain hopper I modeled. Uh, and this is just a bit, basically it in a nutshell. And like I said, it's very easy to do. It's as simple as going to your cupboard, trying to find something that looks realistic and matches the grain spillage in this particular case. It's very realistic and it's a really cool effect you can do on your hoppers to enhance them and make them look a lot more realistic. So, that'll wrap up this video for now guys. Like I said, just wanted to get this out here for you guys. I'll be posting some more videos. I got some more freight weathering videos coming up here soon. I'll be posting very shortly. So, thanks for watching again guys. Take it easy. I'll see you next time.